Good morning, friends, and welcome to Thursday, January 14th. Thank you to Esther Knopfsinger for our music this morning. Thursday devotion is from the Upper Room Discipline, written by Katie Hainland. And our scripture this morning is 1 Samuel 3, 1 through 20. Now the boy Samuel was ministering to the Lord under Eli. The word of the Lord was rare in those days, and visions were not widespread. At the time, Eli, whose height, eyesight had begun to grow dim so that he could not see, was lying down in his room. The lamp of God had not yet gone out. And Samuel was lying down in the temple of the Lord where the ark of God was. And then the Lord called Samuel, Samuel, and he said, Here I am, and he ran to Eli and said, here I am, for you called me. But he said, I did not call. Lie down again. So he went and lay down, and the Lord again called again, Samuel. Samuel got up and went to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. But he said, I did not call, my son. Lie down again. Now Samuel did not yet know the Lord, and the word of the Lord had not yet been revealed to him. The Lord called Samuel again a third time, and when he got up and went to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. Then Eli perceived that the Lord was calling the boy. And therefore Eli said to Samuel, Go, lie down, and if he calls you, say, You shall say, Speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. So Samuel went and lay down in his place. Now the Lord came and stood there, calling as before, Samuel, Samuel. And Samuel said, Speak, for your servant is listening. And then the Lord said to Samuel, See, I am about to do something in Israel that will make both ears of anyone who hears it tingle. On that day I will fulfill against Eli all that I have spoken concerning his house from beginning to end. For I have told him that I am about to punish his house forever for the iniquity that he knew because his sons were blaspheming God and he did not restrain them. Therefore I swear to the house of Eli that the iniquity of Eli's house shall not be explained by sacrifice or offering forever. Samuel lay there in the, till morning and then he opened the doors of the house of the Lord. And God, Samuel was afraid to tell the vision to Eli, but Eli called Samuel and said, Samuel, my son, and he said, here I am. Eli said, what was it that he told you? Do not hide it from me. May God do so to you and more also if you hide anything from me that of all that he told you. So Samuel told him everything and hid nothing from him. And then he said, it is the Lord. Let him do what seems good to him. And as Samuel grew up, the Lord was with him, and let none of his words fall to the ground. And all Israel, from Dan to Beersheba, knew that Samuel was a trustworthy prophet of the Lord. The Lord continued to appear at Shiloh, for the Lord revealed himself to Samuel at Shiloh by the word of the Lord. And the word of Samuel came to all of Israel. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Now this first half of the story will be familiar to most readers. Young Samuel called by God in the middle of the night. 
But because Samuel does not yet know the Lord, he mistakes the voice for his mentor, Eli. But Eli understands what is happening and gives Samuel the instructions that he needs to receive God's message. And Samuel listens. In Sunday school lessons, this story often ends at verse 10 with Samuel dutifully replying to God's call, Speak, for your servant is listening. But we, when we press on through verse 20, we learn that God's message is really one of judgment against Eli's household. And at first, Eli, Samuel's afraid to share what he's heard from his mentor. But Eli insists, and when Samuel tells him, he listens. Eli and Samuel show that hearing the word of the Lord is often a communal effort. Samuel would not have known the voice of the Lord had it not been for Eli's wisdom and experience. And Eli, who had lost his eyesight and prophetic vision, would not have known that God was doing a new thing in Israel had it not been for young Samuel. Importantly, they loved and trusted each other enough to listen and to learn from each other. And together they discerned the way forward. Many modern readers may feel that the word of the Lord is rare in our day, since few of us wake up in the night to hear God calling our names. But God is still speaking and is often heard best in community. As the example of Eli and Samuel shows us, consider how God is raising up different voices in your life, in our church, and in the world to reveal to you something that you could not know by yourself. Let us pray. O oh God, give us ears to listen to one another hearts to trust one another, so that together we may hear your call to us to new things. Speak, Lord, for your servants are listening. Amen. And our closing hymn is, Here I Am, Lord. hear the call of God.